If you've ever had somebody who has gone through your stuff, that's never a good thing. And in corporate networks, we have that same problem as we send traffic coursing through the veins of our networks. So let me show you what I'm talking about, and then I'll show you a couple of solutions of what we can do to protect our packets as they're crossing networks so that people cannot get into our stuff. So let's imagine this network right here, and let's imagine that you and I are connected into R2, this router, and we're managing it. Maybe we're creating a new user account or changing a password or doing something else regarding the configuration of that device. And one way of doing that is we could enable web services on the router with IP, HTTP server, and specify the authentication, and we could log in and manage the router right from its basic built-in GUI. So here we are with the web browser. If we go to monitor, and then we go to configure, let's create a new user account. So let's create a new user name called John, privilege 15, secret, top secret, pass, exclamation mark, two, three, and we'll press enter. And bada bing, bada boom, we just created a new user account. We're managing our router. Now, <laughs> what's the problem with this? The problem with this is that we're not using a secure protocol. Telnet and HTTP are not secure protocols. And why does that matter? The reason that matters is because if we're going over some other network, and I refer to this network as some other network that we don't trust, we don't manage it. If somebody is getting into our stuff and they're eavesdropping on our packets and they're looking at the details, guess what? They just captured all that information we communicated, including the password, because we had insecure protocols over an untrusted network. Let me show you. So here is a packet capture over that network. And if we did a display filter, this is Wireshark, a packet capture tool. If we did a filter saying, please just show me TCP information, and we'll just grab this guy right here and I'll right click and I'll say follow. And that way we can follow either the TCP stream all knitted together or the HTTP stream. Let's go ahead and do HTTP. And this is showing us the HTTP session that we just experienced from our workstation over to router two. But here's the bad news right here. <laughs> In plain text, it's showing us right here, username John, privilege 15, secret top secret pass, exclamation mark, two, three, and then a carriage return. Our password that we just configured at privilege level 15 for that user John is no longer safe because the eavesdropper on that network now has that information as well. So what can we do to solve a problem like that? Well, there's actually a few solutions. Number one, use secure protocols like HTTPS instead of HTTP. Or if we're doing a remote terminal session, use SSH instead of Telnet. Those are great steps because those protocols encrypt the data. But in addition to that, if we do need to use plain text protocols like Telnet or HTTP and we wanna protect the traffic, we can leverage and implement virtual private networks. And one way of doing that is with a suite of protocols called IPsec. And the goal of IPsec is to protect individual IP packets, wrap them up, encrypt them, and keep them safe as they cross networks, including untrusted networks like the internet. And here's an example of how that might work. If we have these two locations, we'll call this over here on the left site one and over here on the right site two, and we wanted to protect all traffic that was going from the 10.1 network over the 10.2 network, what we could do is we could build an IPsec logical tunnel between these two routers. And then the traffic would go like this. PC1, if it's going to PC2 or any, to anywhere on that network, it would send the traffic to its default gateway. The default gateway would take it, make a routing decision, say, oh, before I send it, I'm going to go ahead and encrypt it. So the original packet would look like this. So this would be the payload right here. And that payload would include anything that was layer four and higher, whatever it was, HTTP, ICMP, what have you. And then in the original packet, it would be the source address of PC1 as far as the IP source address and the destination would be PC2. However, before R1 forwards it, it's gonna take all this data right here. It's going to encrypt it. So this is the encrypted payload. And encryption is simply a fancy word for making it all scrambled. So someone who doesn't have the right information doesn't know how to unlock it and take a look at what the real data is. So this would all be the encrypted payload and then it would add a little teeny header for IPsec and then for the outside header, it would have the source address of R1 and the destination address of R2. So all the internet would see is they'd see this packet that's going from R1 to R2. At layer four, this protocol with IPsec would be 50 normally. There's some exceptions to that, but it'd be 50 for ESP. And then everything else is encrypted. So R1 encrypts it, ships it over safely. Anybody who's eavesdropping here now sees gobbledygook for the payload. Then R2 takes that packet, decrypts it, and then forwards it on normally to PC2, who didn't even know 
that it was encrypted along the path. So just like we don't want people prying in and looking at the details of our personal stuff, we also don't want unauthorized people digging in and looking at the details of our corporate or personal data as packets as they're coursing through networks. So to solve that, we can use solutions like VPNs. Now, one important and very viable option for a virtual private network, a VPN, is to use IPsec, which is a suite of protocols. And another good question is, how do these routers, like how do they know like what traffic to encrypt and what traffic to how to send it and where to send it? The answer to that is a bigger discussion, which we will continue in the next video and this little series I'm going to put together regarding IPsec VPNs. So I'll see you in that video soon. Meanwhile, be happy, be safe, and happy studies.